From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. I have said this before and I truly mean it from my heart. It's such a joy that we can come into your home or wherever you see this program. I wish we could be there personally. But so many of you have written and said thank you for helping us during these terrible, perilous times. You know, that's quite a word, perilous times. Jack, that word's in the Bible, isn't it? Oh, Can you give us that no. word? It involves 17 different sins that people are committing as ministers of our churches. Right, right. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. This know also that in the last day before Jesus comes back, perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despises those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And if it's your pastor, or if it's someone you're running around with, from such turn away, that's a command from God. There's too much of this baloney with all these people. Oh, well, you know, I'm a son, only a sinner saved by grace and can't help it. If you're saved, and if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old oh, things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Now, a real Christian is saved once and for all and forever if it's real. Here's how you know when it's not real. The Holy Spirit can be grieved and quenched. And when you grieve the Holy Spirit, he does something. He spanks you. And he says, if you're committing a sin and I don't spank you, it's because I don't spank the devil's children. Mm. And you are the Bible. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 8, a bastard. A bastard is not a dirty word. It means your father is not the father. Someone got your mother in trouble and you're, you're the one. God help us. And America is filled with people today who talk the language and they are not saved. They're lost sinners, bastards. Well, you know, Jack, as you went through that whole passage, I maybe went through your mind. I could see everything that he said in the papers or in articles that I've read. It's so prevalent, isn't it? Another passage of scripture he quoted last week was Matthew 24. And that also pertains to today, doesn't it, Jack? Matthew 24. Oh, so you want me to quote it yes, again? Yes, will you do All that? Right. That'd be great. As Jesus said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Master, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming, your second coming? Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you'll be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Nations shall rise against station and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in Diverse places, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Now, then shall they deliver you to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world. And then shall the end of the age of the church come. All denominations cease forever as I preached last week. And we become one in Christ Jesus and Easter Sunday morning, the Holy Spirit came, said, you, Dr. Ben, because you've memorized this book and you've gone through it 100 times by memory, you know this book so well, you have just been appointed by Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the Holy Trinity, to become the final prophet, to tell the world what's coming, the imminent return of Christ, 
to set up the kingdom of heaven on earth where there'll be no more sin once they get it established. Here on earth, heaven transferred to earth. And the Father is his kingdom. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. But the Father says, yes, but the Lord Jesus is my son and he will be the king of the kings, the Lord of the lords. In control and he's so just. But the Holy Spirit is called the paraclete. Did you know it's in the Bible? It means the comforter. Mm -hmm. And he will bring peace and comfort like that world has never known. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And he says, against this, there's no law. Keep your Ten Commandments. Once you've got the nine fruits of the Spirit, you don't need commandments to tell you how to live anymore. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. Forget it. You've got the Holy Spirit, and you're different. And if you're not different, you need a second dip. Mm. You know, again, Jack, that whole portion of Scripture there, so many things in the world pertaining to what God said we should be looking for just prior to His coming. There's something there, though, Jack. What is the sign? The sign. There's so many signs out there. But what is the sign pointing to the return of the Lord? As the lightning come from the east to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be a bolt of lightning. And I believe it's not just going to be local. I believe it's going to be from one end of the world to the other, east to west. And that's the sign of the coming of Jesus Christ. Set up his kingdom on earth. That's not the church. It's gone. It's finished. End of the world doesn't mean the world because it can never end. The world is here forever and forever and forever. And anyone that preaches different doesn't know their Bibles. These guys got out there in those sheets a couple hundred years ago were fools. When the Bible says the world will never end, it means that. And I can give you a half a dozen verses about it right now. But the light of this bolt from east to west. And it's the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, then after he brings us back in that vehicle he's created, 1,500 miles long, wide and high, could take care of billions. It's that big. 1,500 miles up in space. And they all get in it and come down together. Now, I want to get something else straight, honey. All right. For a long time, God has straightened me up because I have memorized this Bible and gone through it a hundred times with a memory. And I think I know it from cover to cover. I've challenged any man, even the Pope, how I'll debate him because the Vatican magazine last month said, we want to get rid of this Pope. He is a heretic and doesn't believe what we Catholics believe. Who's saying it? The leaders of the Catholic Church, Vatican magazine. I'm, I'm in favor of joining all Christians together and colluding my Catholic brothers and sisters. It's going to be one when Jesus sets up the kingdom of heaven, one Christian denomination. But here is a pope who now says, you don't need Jesus to get to heaven. We're going to be the, believe the atheists are there. No, they won't. Do you believe this book? He that believeth in Christ hath everlasting life. He that believeth not on Christ shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides in him. Pope Francis, you say there's no hell. I can quote 211 verses that there is a hell. God forgive you as the Pope of the Catholic Church. My hero was Pope John Paul and Pope Benedict, men of God, real Catholic men real Catholic lovers of the Holy Bible. You say there's no hell? Oh man, Pope Francis, don't you believe anything about the Bible? I love the Bible and the Catholic and Protestant Bibles are the same book. Now let's see what our Bibles, yours and ours, Protestant and Catholic say. 
John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish. But if you don't believe, you will perish. All the atheists that you're getting into heaven without it, without him. Let's go on. Two verses farther, John 3, 18, he that believeth in Christ is not condemned. He that believeth not is condemned already before judgment day. He waits in Hades for the final judgment, but condemned already. Verse 36, he that believes on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. And he's transferred that morning of the judgment to Gehettas, the final penitentiary of souls. You want to hear what it's about? The fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable. Who are they? Whoremongers, adulterers, those that confess every dirty sin there is, those who are drug addicts, and those, the Bible says, who are liars shall have their part in Gehenna, the lake of fire which burns forever and forever. And the term that we all know is, it is called hell. You better start believing your Bible, because Pope Francis, if you don't, you'll end up with them lost. Mm. And you know, Jack, that's so very, very important. You better believe your Bible, because that is God speaking. You know, we can listen to people all around us, but when we open the Bible, that's the Lord speaking. Amen. And uh, we have a, a brand new offer for you this week, and it is the Jack Penipe Prophecy Bible. There's so much in here. I'd like for you to see our promo explaining it just a little bit better. Take a look. Presenting the third edition of the Jack Vanapy Prophecy Bible, this beautiful burgundy leather-bound edition has been created exclusively for the friends of Jack Vanapy Ministries. Dr. Vanapy has highlighted all 10,385 prophetic verses and coded each passage in the margins so you'll know at a glance the event to which the prophecy refers. The Jack Vanapy Prophecy Bible King James Version features the words of Christ in red and includes the program Dr. Vanapy used to categorize and memorize over 15,000 verses of Scripture. Also contained in the pages of this outstanding third edition are three books by Dr. Vanapi, Your Future, an A to Z Index to Prophecy, Revelation Revealed Verse by Verse, and Daniel Final End Time Mysteries Unsealed, also verse by verse. This special Bible would make a great gift for any occasion. Oh, there's so much that you need to really have in your heart in the Word of God. And so you need to have this in your home, the Jack Penipe Prophecy Bible. It's one of a kind, and it certainly will help you to understand some of the things going on in the world right now. But let me just catch up here. I'd like to jump down to something that Jack mentioned a, a moment ago as he was quoting the scriptures. Famines and pestilences. Did you ever see pictures of some of the starving children around the world. They're starving, famines and pestilences. Well, something else is happening, the diseases. Congo soldiers pleased to enforce Ebola emergency. This is not something that's just going to pass. Going on, fears growing Congo's Ebola could spread to neighboring countries. My, oh my, wow. it's quite a risk. And then here you see it again, the Ebola outbreak in Congo declared global health concern. Well, you know, there are all, kind, it, all kinds of diseases around there, Jack, yeah. and we would dwell on that, but do be praying, please, for these young children. As we try to get some food over to them and try to get uh, medicines to them and so forth. But I'm gonna go into something else. And Jack really... This is worse for the children, believe me. Yes. I hope I can get through this without weeping because it made me cry when I read it. Iniquity shall abound. I've never heard of anything so bad in all my life. Well, take a look. The McAvaney Intelligence Advisor. Wake up, America. Growing evidence of our collapsing society. Sex trafficking of children 
in America. My word, in America. It's estimated that at least 100,000 children, some estimate 200,000 girls and boys, are bought and sold for sex in the United States every year, with as many as 300,000 children in danger of being trafficked for sex each year. You know, the sex trafficking in America uh, is one of the worst. In fact, we are number one in the world, but it's everywhere. Over in, uh, for instance, in India, 13-year-olds are bought and sold, and down to even age six and seven, they're capturing them and selling them in to sex trafficking. You know, friends, I, I don't think I've ever read anything that moves my heart so much about iniquity. Certainly, that's the bottom of the pit right there. And you know what Jesus said? He knew it was going to happen. If you touch a child, it is better for you if a millstone were hanged about your neck and you were cast into the sea. Eternal death. Oh, and how no God, fire. how Amen. Jesus condemned it. Oh, my, oh, my. These dear children pray. Jack, that's one of the evidences right there of iniquity. Rexella and God hate sin. Oh, the God of love will over. No, he won't overlook everything. He says, put a, a boulder around their neck and drop them into the ocean. But there's more than that. There's an eternal hell coming. And all you people that are whoremongers chasing after every hard lot, we got these people that are Me Too's, and the women all come forward. They were raped. And what's going on in the Christian church? 1,600 priests raped little children. But I'm just after the Catholics. I got my own denomination, the Baptist. They just raped 700 women. And the World Council of Churches, seven out of Every 10 of their ministers are looking at dirty sex magazines and looking at all the naked pictures and women and getting off sexually by looking at the pictures and manipulating themselves. It's a rotten, corrupt world of sinners going to hell and they're sitting in their churches on Sunday and singing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Your yeah, God is, but you aren't, and you're not going to see God. And you know, Jack, the thing that I want to impress on everyone right now is that we need to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Maybe you've been crying a lot over things in the world. Maybe you've been hiding almost your life because you're afraid to go out. But we can know something much, much better, and that's peace in our hearts because the Lord is there. The Lord said, if I go away, I will come again. Jesus is coming back to make everything right. When he comes on the earth, it's not going to be like it is now, but it's going to be heaven on earth. But are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Would you be taken if he said, come up hither right now? Oh, we need to be ready. Open your heart to the Lord. You can be forgiven of all your sins because the blood of Christ cleanses from all sin. Will you come to him right now as Jack prays his prayer? Father, thank you for the precious blood of Jesus that will make me cleaner than the day I was born. As you wipe away every stain of the past, Jesus, forgive me. Come in my heart now and through your blood, cleanse me. I ask it in your holy name. Amen. And let me say a word now in closing. I'm telling you in the past, I was on television for 20 years and there were stations that said, that guy preaches starts, so we'll cut him off. And they would cut me off for programs. I make you a promise right now. I will never say anything that's not in this book. And I will back everything I say with these headlines that I'm using. If that is wrong, then something's wrong with me. When the world says what the Bible is teaching is coming, we're going to say it. One just tried it in Rochester. I kept quiet, but I'm not going to. I will preach this book until my dying day, and I'll make no apologies for what God Almighty says. And when the newspapers are backing my God, I'll preach it. And I say that in love.
because I love the book of Jesus. You know, Jack, when Jesus comes into a life, he changes a life. You're not the same. In fact, the Bible teaches if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. And you know, Jack, how wonderful it is to know that we're not only cleansed, but the world seems altogether different. The Lord can bring peace that you never had before. Forgiveness, well, that will bring peace that you never had before. Jack, when Christ comes into the life, give us some of the things that he gives to us as we walk with him. The joy, love, all the rest. All the blessing. But let, let me just pick up here on another thing for one second. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all sin, Amen. everything. I don't care how, what you've done, how often you've done it, how hideous, how heinous, how vile, how dirty. If you come and say, I'm sick of my sin, I'm sick of it, Jesus, help me. He'll do it. But it's when you hang on to it, you will suffer Gehenna, the eternal penitentiary of lost souls, and you'll never be able to get out. But he that believes on the Son and gets saved has everlasting life. And that's in that coming holy city that God has told me to start preaching to the world because it's about to all happen. Oh, get ready. And the messages that are coming, tell others, I am now able to reach every human being on earth. Some of them won't turn in. But if you get in your phones and warn them and call your loved ones and call your neighbors, I have a plan to give billions of souls to Christ at that great day. The world for Christ's crusade, fan envy, is starting that great revival. Join me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Jack. Amen. How wonderful it is to walk with the Lord. Did you pray that prayer with Jack a moment ago? You have a new life now, walking a new walk, and it will never be the same. I'd love to send you this, and I've, I've offered it so many times. In fact, every week on our program, first steps in a new direction. Maybe you found yourself in some of the things that Jack has mentioned on our programs from time to time. You know, maybe like his father, you've been an alcoholic. How good it is to be forgiven. How good it is to walk with him. Maybe you've even had illicit sex. The Lord forgave you of that. The blood of Christ cleanses from how much? All sin. So please write to me. I'd love to send you this little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction, and the Lord will walk with you. We'll be pleased to send you a copy of First Steps in a New Direction, absolutely free, if you'll simply write us and ask for it. Our mailing address is Jack Vanipi Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. Remember to ask for your free copy of the booklet, First Steps, when you write. Our address, once again, is Jack Penipe Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. You'll be glad you did. Can I say one thing and, yet? Oh, absolutely. Stella? I just changed my magazine, with, perhaps today. No, no, I now call it, get this, the International Prophecy Journal, and you can have it. I won't even charge you for it. Get in the mail and just send your address. You're on the, for the magazines. Oh, Jack. Free. You know, that magazine is great. Yeah. If they would write to us, they could also find out exactly how to get the magazine. Just send so your address and you'll start getting it. I don't want to send any money with it. Oh, my, oh, my. That's great, Jack. Well, we have a brand new offer for you this week, and I think it's one that you'll not want to overlook because it certainly is one that we need to have in our lives every day. It will show us things going on in the world and how they fit into the coming of the Lord and so forth. But please don't overlook this wonderful offer. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. My friend, to order the Jack Van Epi Prophecy Bible, and oh, what a gift. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 
1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rex Ella. Thank you, Chuck, and I just want to say, please do not put off getting this wonderful, wonderful Bible. You know, it also is a wonderful gift. I've sent many of these out as gifts, even wedding gifts or birthday gifts or Christmas gifts or whatever. It's wonderful for them to have it in their home reading the Bible. And as you can tell, Jack loves the Bible and he loves prophecy. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna, gonna ask him a personal question here. I've got just a little bit of time here at the end. Jack, you preach so powerfully. You don't hold anything back. Is uh, that sort of in the Bible too, that we should be explicit about what we say on the air and to our friends, do it in love, but explicit about what we say? Jesus spoke out like very few preachers would ever try to speak out. And I do it because I believe this book and I only quote the Holy Bible. Now here it is, 2 Timothy 4, 2, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke. Why? The time will come when they will not endure the sound doctrine of this book. But they will heap to themselves teachers because they have itching ears and they want those ears tickled. They don't want to hear the negatives. They want all the sweet things. But that's not the Bible. The time will come, it says, I repeat, that they will not endure sound doctrine, but they will heap themselves, teachers who will tickle their ears with fables, damnable heresies, and doctrines of devils from such turn away. Oh, Jack, I am so happy, so grateful that you quote the Bible, because the Bible is the Lord talking. You know, as I've said many, many times, we need the Bible in our lives, in our hearts, and live by it every single day. I want to leave you with this wonderful thought. When Jesus comes into a life, he changes everything. And how very, very true that is. We're going to look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very, very much. Bye-bye. And God bless you. We look forward to being with you again. The preceding program was sponsored by the partners of Jack Vanapie Ministries.